Kiwat. Exercise with oxygen therapy. A great therapy, love it. It's not hyperbaric. I'm not saying one is necessarily better than the other. We'll talk about the details and the differences between both, but I will tell you 100% confident Ewat and Hyperbaric are not the same. Let's talk about the differences in this video. If you've seen enough of my videos, you know that I love oxygen, period. I love them all. I like ozone, we use it. I like Ewat, I love Hyperbaric. Oxygen is a molecule required for normal physiology, for normal function. We need more oxygen so that we can heal and regenerate tissue. We need increased oxygen as a nutrient for improved cellular performance. And there are different ways to deliver it. So what is EWAT? Basically, we're exercising. As we exercise, our heart rate goes up, our respiration goes up, right? So we're breathing heavier, our heart is pumping harder. We're creating demand. That's what exercise is. It's a creation of demand for nourishment so that that nourishment can go to the working tissues. So if you're riding a bike, let's say, which most EWAT systems are using a bike, as your legs are turning over, your legs are consuming un unbelievably high levels of oxygen. They're calling, they're saying, hey, demand is up. I need more oxygen going to this working tissue. And so the body's gonna start redirecting blood flow to the working tissue in order to direct the oxygen to that. With EWAT, what we're doing is now we're increasing the oxygen supply as we're increasing the demand. So rather than breathing 21% oxygen, which is what we're breathing right now, and exercising and trying to get as much oxygen as we can, we can now breathe, let's say 94% oxygen through a mask while exercising. So what have we done? We've increased demand by putting somebody through exercise, and now we're increasing supply by breathing a much higher percentage of oxygen than what we're normally getting. As we can manipulate the intensity of the exercise with the percentages of oxygen that we're breathing, we can manipulate the supply and demand of oxygen throughout our body. And there are great benefits of that, especially if you're an athlete looking for improved performance, improved red blood cell flexibility, improved red blood cell absorption of oxygen and delivery of oxygen. That's what you're training. By training at increased and decreased percentages of oxygen while increasing and decreasing the demand, the intensity of your exercise, you are creating the capacity to become much more efficient at absorbing oxygen, at delivering oxygen to the working tissue. That's a great benefit, especially on the athletic side. If you're creating a greater demand, it means you're using up more oxygen, which means you're gonna pull more oxygen, higher percentages of oxygen from the mask that you're breathing, and you're gonna create uh, an increase in how much oxygen is flowing through your system at any given point. So where are some of the differences? Well, number one, you're not changing atmospheric pressure with an EWAT system. So you're still, let's say you're at sea level, you're at 14.7 PSI is the pressure of the atmosphere that you're surrounded by. While you're doing EWAT, you're still at sea level, you're still at 14.7 PSI. So as long as you're not changing atmospheric pressure, you are still relying primarily on your red blood cell carrying capacity. In other words, yes, you're delivering more oxygen to the tissue. Yes, you're pulling, extracting more oxygen from the air or the oxygen that you're breathing. However, you are still limited on how much oxygen you could dissolve into your system because you're limited by red blood cell carrying capacity. You may increase plasma levels a little bit just due to the fact of the demand that you're creating but still the overwhelming majority of oxygen that you're extracting is gonna be carried by red blood cells. Hyperbaric oxygen, the entire therapy is changing atmospheric pressure. When you change atmospheric pressure, you can now certainly fulfill the 100% oxygen saturation of your red blood cells. But really the way hyperbaric works, what makes it unique is that you're now dissolving oxygen into the plasma of the blood. The plasma carries very little oxygen under normal circumstances. Specifically, plasma carries three milliliters of oxygen per liter of blood. It's a very, very small amount. With hyperbaric, depending on how much pressure you're using, what percentage of oxygen you're breathing, and the duration of time you spend in that chamber, the reservoir of plasma, which is typically a very small amount of oxygen, becomes almost an unlimited reservoir capable of carrying up to 20 times more oxygen based on those three variables. And so while EWAT still does deliver an increase in oxygen, it is not anywhere near the amount of oxygen that's capable of being created by a hyperbaric system. Next, with EWAT, your body is already shunting blood to the working tissue. 
In other words, if you're on a bike and you're using your legs, the overwhelming majority of oxygen you're bringing into your body from the EWOT system, from breathing the enriched oxygen, is going to go to the working tissue. So if I'm trying to get more oxygen to my shoulder and I'm using an EWOT system, well, then I really better make sure that my shoulders are involved in the exercise that I'm doing because the body will always shunt blood to the working tissue. If my goal is really to rehabilitate my brain, as an example, well, then I better start doing some complex mathematical equations or some brain games to shunt blood flow to my brain to get the oxygen to go where I'm trying to make it go. If I'm trying to rehab my brain, but I'm using a bicycle to do it, will I get some increased oxygen to my brain? Absolutely. But the overwhelming majority of increased oxygen that you're pulling from that system is going to end up in your legs because that's the working tissue. In a hyperbaric system, you're passive. You're actually not exercising at all. You're not supposed to. You're typically just either sitting or laying and breathing. And the reason for that is as you increase that oxygen to your body, it's now able to evenly go anywhere. And then you can still manipulate that by, say, doing certain brain exercises or reading while you're in the chamber, or you could mobilize a joint. I want this to go to my elbow, so I'm going to mobilize my elbow while I'm getting this oxygen to help drive some of that oxygen to a certain area. But ultimately, as you increase the oxygen in, in a hyperbaric chamber, it's literally going to go everywhere it needs to go. On that same front, the difference between the activity of EWOT and the passiveness of hyperbaric, some patients aren't able to do the work that they need to do in an EWOT system in order to gain the benefit of that extra oxygen. They may have some sort of physical issue or malady that prevents them from being able to exercise at the intensity that they need to pull that oxygen into their body. And in those cases, 100% of the time, the hyperbaric chamber is gonna be a much better fit for those people because they are able to be passive and even being passive, they're getting all of the benefit of the therapy itself. And lastly, another big difference between the two systems is that as you're on the EWOT system and you're changing the intensity, you're varying the intensity of your exercise and you're varying the percentage of oxygen you're breathing and you're getting all of those benefits, again, especially if you're training for something specific, that's a great system to be using. Once you finish that therapy, there's really no increased oxygen in your system for any length of time after that session is over. It'll start to dissolve very quickly. In a hyperbaric setting, again, depending on the pressure that you're at, what pressure setting, what percentage of oxygen you were breathing, and the amount of time you stayed, that reservoir of plasma filling up with oxygen, it just, the whole time you're in the chamber, that reservoir keeps filling and filling and filling. And then when you leave the chamber, that oxygen starts coming out even faster. And there's a lot of benefits to that oxygen as it comes out of your circulation and starts interacting with your cells. So really about 50% of the therapy of hyperbaric is the time someone spends in the chamber. The other 50% of the therapy is actually when the patient gets out of the chamber and that off-gassing starts. Because as soon as your pressure is released, there's nothing keeping that oxygen in solution anymore. It has to start coming out of your circulation and interacting with your cells. Your cells are being flooded with even more oxygen after the fact. And so uh, depending on those three variables, you could have four, six, eight, 12 hours of continued increased oxygenation even after the session is over. So it doesn't end when that patient gets out. The next half of the session begins when the patient gets out. So there are other differences. Those are just some of the big highlights between EWOT systems and hyperbaric. And again, this is not a video to say that EWOT is not good. It's a great therapy. It's just that we still have to understand that these are differences between the equipment. There's differences in what the patient or the person or the athlete should expect from using one versus the other. And they're both great. In most cases, especially on the athlete side, they should consider both. One for improved training capacity, and one for improved healing, recovery, and regeneration. So I hope this helps answer some of the big questions, the differences between EWOT and hyperbaric. Yes, they are absolutely both oxygen therapies, but yes, they help the bodies in two totally different ways. If you find this helpful, if you find it interesting, if you know somebody who's asking that same question, send this video to them, let them understand it. Love to hear some comments below. Please like it, please subscribe. When you do that, it tells YouTube that this is valuable and it helps YouTube send it to other people asking the same question. So help us, help them. Appreciate your time. We'll see you next time.